Hey Gaming Squad! Today's episode is all about breaking boundaries as we explore the 10 best PC games that have gracefully ported into mobile gaming. Picture this, epic adventures and strategic showdowns all neatly tucked into your pocket. Whether you're a PC powerhouse or a mobile maestro, these ports are the real deal for gaming on the move. So buckle up, hit that subscribe button and let's roll into a gaming experience that's as portable as it is epic. Starting off at number 10, we have Hitman Blood Money Reprisal. Ah, Agent 47, everyone's favorite cold-blooded killing machine. If you grew up in gaming in the noughties, there's no way you could have avoided that beautiful bald head and his habit of contract murder. Now, he's back once again thanks to the mobile remaster version, one of the saga's most celebrated outings courtesy of Feral Interactive. The gameplay is much as you'd expect. You get a contract, load into a location, and go around sneakily seeing off guards, henchmen, and the main target or targets in some cases. I don't want to say too much to avoid spoiling it for newcomers, but just know there's a reason why so many fans of the series hold cherished memories of strangulation and headshots in this game. Breaking into number 9, we have GTA Vice City Netflix Edition. This is now available on Android and iOS courtesy of Netflix Games. Upon release, we immediately went hands-on with GTA Vice City to record 20 minutes of gameplay. This way, everyone can see how the game performs on our testing device. You can see in the recording that the remastered games contain improved visuals. Things like better lighting and high-resolution textures with increased draw distance and quality of life features like Grand Theft Auto V's controls. During our time with GTA Vice City, it became clear that the visuals were better than the PC and console versions of the game. The good news is, there are plenty of ways to tweak the gameplay settings to suit your playstyle, from driving inputs to the camera distance while in a car. Coming in at number 8, we have GOAT Simulator 3. Debuting initially on PS5, Xbox, and PC, GOAT Simulator 3 has now made its way to mobile devices as a full-featured game. The mobile version even features co-op multiplayer support, just like its console counterpart and encompasses many of the exciting features found in the console version. Now, you can travel the unique landscape of San Angoria with your favorite mischievous goat, Pilgor, right from the palm of your hand. The well-timed premium release of Goat Simulator 3 provides the perfect escape on one of those gaming phones you may have picked up during the holiday season. The premise of Goat Simulator is refreshingly straightforward. You play as a goat, travel the world, headbutt people, steal cars, and cause general mayhem within the game world. Next up at number 7, we have Warframe Mobile. Warframe is an online free-to-play third-person looter shooter game that has been one of the most played Steam games for some years. The game is even coming to mobile devices very soon. Warframe is one of the few free games that has successfully embraced and defined the looter shooter genre. I have been playing the game for a few years now, so I was overjoyed to hear that Warframe was finally coming to mobile. As a mobile game, Warframe has definitely taken some inspiration from Genshin Impact's minimalistic UI. However, the fire button definitely takes up a lot of space. The gameplay is exactly similar to the original version of the game with no discernible changes. The ability-driven combat and the fast-paced parkour make a great gameplay loop. Down to number 6, we have SpongeBob the Cosmic Shake. Last month, Handy Games announced that it was bringing Purple Lamp's SpongeBob SquarePants to iOS and Android as a premium release. The game debuted on PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC as a new 3D platformer, and it eventually got current generation ports on Android and iOS. It is out now on mobile and is excellent so far. I've played it for about an hour, trying out the various graphics options. Gameplay is engagingly fluid, allowing players to unlock both classic and exciting new platforming skills. It also offers more than 30 costumes for players to don, including fan favorites like Snail Bob and SpongeGar. The game features seven distinct locations, including the Wild West Jellyfish Fields and Halloween Rock Bottom, which perfectly capture the zany vibe and colorful aesthetics of the original series. Moving on to number 5, we have Rainbow Six Mobile. Ubisoft has announced Rainbow Six Mobile, a new game that brings the core gameplay of Rainbow Six Siege to mobile devices. Rainbow Six Mobile looks and plays like its console counterpart. It's a 5v5 attack and defend FPS with destructible environments and a variety of specialist gadgets. 
Attackers use drones, explosives, and various other offensive items to push their way into the defending team's fortified positions. While a huge amount of Rainbow Six Mobile appears to be near enough straight adaption of Rainbow Six Siege, there are some notable changes. Matches are shorter as R6 Mobile is a best of three round affair, and the HUD has been adjusted to work for mobile. Despite the shorter matches, the modes are what you'd expect from a game derived from Siege. Secure area and bomb will be present and correct. Next up at number 4 we have Need for Speed Mobile. This is a driving and racing game developed by Tencent and EA. This game is one of the most similar to the Need for Speed games on consoles, with excellent graphics, spectacular customizable cars, and an open world in which you can roam freely in search of races and activities. Its advanced graphics quality has been achieved thanks to the use of the Unreal Engine 4 for its development. The driving in NFS Mobile is similar to the Need for Speed Edge, with an arcade feel and simple controls on a smartphone or tablet. Among the cars available, you will find super sports cars such as the McLaren F1 or the Lamborghini Aventador. The map is based on Need for Speed Heat and there is no story mode. Need for Speed Mobile focuses primarily on enjoying online competition with other players, completing quests, and exploring the map. Coming in at number 3 we have The Division Resurgence. In my time playing this game so far, there have been several times when I almost forgot that I was playing a mobile game. As someone very familiar with the third-person shooter series, I immediately felt at home as I ran from cover to cover, activated near-future gadgetry to lock down my position, and took pot shots at unruly ne'er-do-wells as a self-appointed and morally questionable keeper of the peace. Resurgence acts as a side story to Ubisoft's post-apocalyptic Tom Clancy's franchise, which imagines a world torn asunder by a viral pandemic. As the chaos unfolds, an elite group of special operatives known as the Strategic Homeland Division, sleeper agents masking themselves as ordinary citizens, are called into action to maintain order. Next up at number 2 we have Assassin's Creed Jade. When I first heard about Assassin's Creed Jade, I wasn't entirely sure how to feel. After going hands-on with Jade for just shy of 30 minutes though, I'm already impressed by its scope and just how quickly I took to the touch controls. The new adventure set in the 3rd century BC in China is not only treading new ground for the series as an exclusive mobile experience, but also with some of its features too. My time with Jade began, for example, in a character creation suite, which is a first for Assassin's Creed. With a choice to select a male or female character, you can also change up their facial features and hair, and give them a name of your own choosing. Controls and some gameplay elements have been completely redesigned for convenience on mobile platforms. And finally at number 1 we have Resident Evil 4. Resident Evil Village is the 8th mainline installment in the Resident Evil franchise from publisher and developer Capcom. After taking home several Game of the Year awards, Resident Evil Village becomes even more accessible to players with an exciting new release on iOS devices. This is not an altered, shorter version of the game created for mobile. This is the entirety of the Resident Evil Village, the same as the one released on console in 2021. The iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max, though powerful, is still in the early stages of being able to handle something of this size. Just because it technically can run it doesn't mean that it should. Resident Evil Village for iOS is breaking ground in the world of mobile gaming. The experience is both seamless and visually impressive with little to complain about. And that is all for today. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every week. As always, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time right here on Android Tools.